everyone, it's Kaylee for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have had a great Christmas and got to spend lots of time with family and friends. I know we have had a brilliant time celebrating with our family and we still have a few other um, family members to see over the next couple of days, but we have had a really relaxing time. In fact, it's been so relaxing, I thought I was going to have time to make a video when we got back from um, up at the Sunshine Coast and then I realized I really didn't have the time because we were dog sitting and just lots of things happened. So I really really do apologize that this video is up a day late but as they say better late than never so let's go and make some soap the soap we're making today is mint mojito from aroma it has notes of white rum sugar cane and spearmint and i'm hoping to do a white base because there is zero percent vanillin and i'm going to drop swirl two different greens and then do a hanger swirl through it as well and then i'm going to decorate the top with some um, melt and pour embeds that we've been making now when I melted down my oils today, when I put did the hard oils and butters, I also added 1% by oil um, weight of menthol crystals. So my oil weights came to 1.8 kilos. So I've added 18 grams of menthol crystal and melted it into my oils. And this is so that hopefully we get that really nice fresh tingling feeling when we're using the soap. The first thing I'm going to do is pour my lye water solution down my stick blender just to stop any splashback and then I'm going to split it out for the colours and then add in the fragrance which I'll stir in by hand. Okay, so the first colour I'm going to use is some Maldives Mica from Bath Bomb World. It's actually also the same or very similar colour to Sea Mist Mica from My Micro Obsession. But I got quite a good deal on this big tub here. So I'm going to put some of that one in there. And the other colour I'm going to use today is some Lime Spider from My Micro Obsession. And then into my big bucket I have got some water dispersible titanium dioxide and we're going to use that to colour the base. Okay, so I was hoping not to have to stick blend this, but it does look like it's going to rice just slightly. So we're going to give it a quick blitz, which will hopefully sort that out. Okay, so that quick blitz has actually got rid of that ricing that was happening. But because I have mixed that in with the stick blender, I'm now going to start moving quite quickly so I don't end up with soap just sat in the bucket. First thing I'm going to do is pour a whole heap of this white into the mould and then we'll drop in the two different greens. In, I'm just going to grab my hanger here and I'm going to swirl this through. So just going around in some circles. It looks like it might be quite thick but it is quite fluid so it um, should get some really nice swirls through here and that should be more than enough. So what I'm now going to do is just get these buckets scraped out and then I'll come back and we'll decorate the top.
Alright, so now we're ready to decorate the top of this. I'm not going to do it as a pipe top, but we have got a few decorations to go on the top here. What I have here are some um, ice cubes. They've been made with some no sweat melt and pour, and I added just a tiny bit of blizzard mica into them. I then poured it into one of my smaller molds and then chopped it up into little cubes once set. We also have a couple of mint leaves, because of course you can't have a mint mojito without some mint decoration. And most mojitos have that sort of limey sort of taste. So we also have some little limes to decorate the top too. So all I'm going to do is, let's have a think, is pop in a lime on each side. And we might decorate that with the little mint leaf in front. And then I'm going to push in just a couple of these ice cubes as well. So usually when I'm looking to decorate the tops of my soaps, I really don't have that much of a clue of what, what I intended to do. I just know what I actually want to go on the top here. So I'm going to keep popping these in just like that. We might get all the limes in first and then we'll get the mint leaves and then the ice cubes. So in the last video I put up just before Christmas, I answered some or tried to answer someone's question about how it was that I managed to give up work and start working for myself. One of the things I wanted to also share with you is how I learned to save money for fun things while working for myself because quite often when you work for yourself your money goes back into your business or it goes on to essential items that you need such as paying bills like insurance and the car and all that sort of thing but it is still nice to be able to save some money to do the things that we want to do and one of the things I usually try and save for is for hubby and I to go on holiday once every two years so this year or in January we will be going for our holiday and I usually spend the year saving up for it and the way I do it it was I was introduced to the 52 week challenge so the idea between behind a 52 week challenge jar is that on the first week of the year you put in one dollar or you might be in England you put in one pound, you'd basically put in the equivalent of one of your currency. Um, and then on the second week you'd put in two, so I'd put in two dollars, three for the third week and you go right the way through until you get up to you know week 52 and you've got 52 dollars going into the jar. And it's by the end of the year, I can't think what the amount is off the top of my head, but you should have over a thousand dollars. And then I used it. the first year I did it, my auntie gave it to me as a Christmas present, this jar that she'd made up. And the first year I did it, I then actually was quite boring and I used all the money I'd saved up to pay off my car rego, which was due in the first couple of months of the new year. Now I actually use that money to go towards fun things like holidays or I might buy myself some clothes if it's not a holiday um, year and that sort of thing. So... After I did it the first year of putting the one in for the first week and two, I thought there's got to be a better way than this because around Christmas time when all of the expenses come up, you know, you've got Christmas presents and you've got Christmas dinners and all that sort of stuff, it actually is, I found it more challenging to put away $52 at the end of the year than I actually did at the beginning of the year when there is actually less income coming in for me. So the second year I did it, I decided I was going to do it the opposite way around and I was going to start the year at 52 and then go down. So I put 52, 51, 50 and I kept doing it that way. And I found this to be a really great way to save money. Um, and I was able to, I bought, got us a holiday a couple of years ago to Perth and then I decided last year I was going to save up and do the whole holiday thing again this year. So we are once again going to Perth. And that is all from doing this um, challenge jar. This year I decided that I was going to work backwards. So I worked from the 52 um, back down to 1. 
but I thought if I've got extra money that I can afford to put into the jar this year, I will. So most weeks I actually managed to put $50 a week into the jar, but on those odd weeks where I didn't quite have 52 to go, or that amount of money to go into the jar, I made sure I put in whatever that week was. So if we got to um, week 26, um, and we were working backwards, it should have been about, I think that's when we put 20, in fact we would probably put 27 in on 26 so when I if we got to that week if I couldn't afford to put in the 50 I made sure I put in the $27 and it's been such a fantastic way of saving money so we've got we've got our flights booked we've got accommodation booked we've got all these different things and that is all from doing this 52 week challenge so if you want to give it a go just google the 50 week 52 week challenge on or money challenge on Google and there are lots of little templates you basic I'll show you a picture of my jar or show you at the end of this video my jar there's basically a little sticker that you stick to the front of the jar and then as you add in um, your money you just color off whichever week that you're on so you always know how much you're going to pop into the jar each week so if you have a Google um, for the 52 week challenge they do both the forward and the backward um, way of counting and then you just pop it onto a jar and then you can start saving some money that way. I have heard if you're no good with having money sitting in a jar on the counter because some people say they just see the money and they want to spend it, you can also set it up in your account. It does take a while to actually set it up but if you know that you've got guaranteed money going into your account you can actually set it up so that each week you move a set amount of money into a savings account that you actually can't access with your card and that's another really good way of saving money too. So I'm going to finish getting these ice cubes in here and now I have a little fly. Um, I think some of these are too big to fill that gap with so I'm just going to chop one of these ice cubes up so we can get that one in there. So I'll keep popping these ones in and then we will be finished Mint Mojito. Alright, so here is Mint Mojito up close. I'm going to leave this one sit here overnight and then I'm going to come back and cut it tomorrow and we'll see what we've got on the inside. Right, so we are back to cut mint mojito. It is set up beautifully. It smells really good. The only thing is I can see lots of glycerin rivers along the edge of this one. Now I don't mind glycerin rivers because I think it really adds to the look of the whole design. I know that it's going to be a super moisturizing bar and it's a sign that it is a handmade bar of soap. So glycerin rivers never faze me too much. I've got a feeling I may have them because of the menthol crystal, but I'll have to try it again and see what happens. But before I go ahead and cut that one, I just wanted to show you my 52 week challenge jar. And it really is just a jar. I've printed up my um, list of, you can see they've got weeks, the, the dates, and then it comes around to how much money you put in and how much you should have after week by week. Now, as I said, I go backwards from 52 to one, but you can go forwards from one up to 52. I always keep my highlighter in the jar, so as I put my money in each week, I highlight it off so I know I've done it. And as a market stall holder, I find this really useful for keeping small change in. So after I've done a Saturday night market and I may have one too many $50 notes in my float, I know I can split it up into some smaller change. And when I go into my Sunday morning market, I know I've got change for my customers and don't have to worry that the banks aren't open overnight. So I did a bit of research online and I found a really, really good website, which I've left the link to down below. And on there, they've got lots of little different PDFs about different ways in which you can do the money jar. So you've got the, the original way of $1 and going up. You've got it going backwards. They also do it in increments of 50 cents and 25 cents, which is really good for young children if they want to save up some money. You can also do it monthly, bi-monthly. Um, fortnightly however you want to do they've got all sorts of different templates they are in dollars so if your country works in dollars that's going to be the best one um, otherwise if you work in something like pounds you can even though it says one dollar just put one pound in um, so that can actually be easily fixed 
I print mine up on a sticker sheet and onto my jar and then that stays um, in a nice safe place for me. And when I get up to certain amounts, I actually go and deposit it into the bank account, into a savings account so that we don't have all of that sitting in the house. But let's go and cut this bar of soap. All right, so we're gonna use the multi-bar cutter to cut this one today. I'm going to line it up so that the cutter misses the lime slices, but it may cut some of the lemons. And it looks like we're going to be pretty good. We may cut just a little bit of leaf on some of them, but not too much. So we'll go straight down and we'll see what those glycerin rivers look like on the inside and what swirl we've got. We do have lots of glycerin rivers through this one, but we really have a gorgeous looking swirl. And we've got each piece have got their lime, their mint leaf and their ice cubes. But I'm really pleased with how the hanger's gone through there. There's some of those times when you're putting the hanger through and you think, oh, have I done enough? Or have I just done one too many swirls and ruined the inside? And as I said, although this is full of glycerin rivers, it really adds to the whole look of this soap. We have got a little bit of leaking on this one, so it could be the fragrance oil. Um, but hopefully when it sits here to cure just for a couple of days, that will all go back in. It is the first time I've worked with the menthol crystals in the soaps. So we'll see if that actually has any impact as well. I'm hoping it will give a really nice fresh feeling when you use them. This one you can see we've just cut off a little bit of that ice cube and that really adds to the top. And there's a better close up of the top of the soap. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how I make my mint mojito soap. This one will be available on the website from the 28th of um, January. And don't forget we are now shipping internationally as well. So if you have enjoyed watching me make my mint mojito soap, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. I will get back to you with any questions that you may have. And until the next video, have a great week. Bye.